and I've been studying this book, and I know that Zachariah Sitchin has CIA connections. We need to read all books, realizing that we might not be told the truth. We have to realize that um, some of these people are less academic than other people, but there's just all kinds of different forms of uh, distortion. But anyway, I've read all these books, and there are a lot of great clues in here, even if he may have CIA distortion. And I'm really interested in this writing. I don't know if my camera will let me zoom in. We see a chalice right here. We see this six-pointed um, symbol here that we see on Walmart and everywhere else. I just saw it last night. We watched um, Men in Black again. I was looking for codes. I found some. Um, but what I wanted, what I'm learning in this book is I'm restudying all these lineages and and studying the ancient politics between Inanna Ishtar and her Nephilim ancestors, and specifically Marduk Ra. So, um, if you get this book, you know, if you want to read along with me, it'd be fun to kind of have a book club. And this isn't maybe the if you have never read Zechariah Sitchin, this might not be the one to start with. But it's okay, you know. You could jump right in and just it's it's the information is so crazy if you've never gone through it before, but um apparently there's a few lineages I wanted to bring up. One of them is Enoch. Now his name in uh in Anunnaki I think is and Medaranki. And that was Enoch and he had a wife, um, Sar, um, Sarput, and I believe she was fully human because right at this time um, when Marduk came of age to marry, this was the time when the taboo, there was a taboo against marrying humans, and this taboo, or there was a taboo against having sex with humans, but th especially against marrying them, but right at this time where Marduk is coming of age, uh, he um, he's the first to take a fully human wife, and she's his official spouse. Now, Enoch had a daughter named um, um, Sarput, and Marduk and Sarput, she must not have been fully human because Enoch wasn't fully human, um, but they had a son named Nabu. And this is the, this is where the prophet, all of the prophet language in Hebrew comes from. It's from Nabu. So I think that's really important to mention. And I'm going to try to keep these in smaller um, bites. But also, um, they have the word mesh, like in Gilgamesh. Mesh means, you know, partly divine. You know, and divine is a word that we have come to take as, you know, we are still under the brainwashing that divine means you know, the true God, the true creator, and really it's a word that means um, these false gods, the Nephilim. Now, um, I just wanted to go into that Nabu here means the spokesman, the prophet. Um, lost my place. Uh, for that is the literal meaning of the word, as is the meaning of the, um, the parallel Hebrew word Nabi, means prophet. Nabu was the godson and the Adam son of ancient scripture, the one whose very name meant prophet. And as in the Egyptian prophecies earlier quoted, his name and role became linked to messianic expectations. Um, just reading here, these writings that are like um, 4,000 years ago, there's a lot of um, apocalyptic writings in here that you might want to be aware of during these times when you're trying to assess what is going on now. Um, so this talks about Simjazi. They call him, this must be his Shamyaza. Now that's Simjazi, the Pleiadian, and he's the one who came down. He was the leader of an away team of Pleiadians who came down to Mount Hermon, and they basically decided to disobey their own rules. And the, um, the instigator of the transgression was named Yekon. So Simjazi takes a lot of heat for this, but he was just the leader of that group. Uh, but the one who led astray the sons of God and brought them down to earth and led them astray through the daughters of man was named Yakan. 
it happened, these sources confirmed during the times of Enoch. So I just wanted to kind of point out Enoch's other names, um, that Enoch was most likely the grandfather of Nabu, who was the first most ancient um, person in the most ancient Sumerian tablets described as the prophet Messiah who was both a god and a man. So they're talking about Nabu as the first. Now I know that this is brought up in the Star Wars movies and I just don't remember the context and I really have to go back and see what they were saying in the Star Wars movies. But um, I also wanted to bring up these guys because we're seeing a lot of twin symbolism going on. Now these are, I want to also look at the giant feather. Um, I don't think that's actually says it's like a date palm thing, but this is the same feather that we see in the Lincoln Memorial. It's still used a lot today, and um, I believe that it is. Sim this is the Florida de Lee. It is symbolic of the stars looking east at our equator. It's the shape of the dome. Okay, so anyway, that's a little aside, but these guys are. Um, Nanar Sin, who was not a combatant in the War of the Gods. He did not take sides between Enlil and Enki. And his, uh, his selection as a king leader was meant to signal to people everywhere that under his leadership an era of peace and prosperity would begin. And he and his spouse, Ningal, were greatly beloved by the people of Sumer and Ur, and itself spelled prosperity, well-being, and its very name, which meant urban domesticated place, came to mean not just city, but the city, the urban jewel of the ancient lands. Manar Sin's temple there, a skyscraping ziggurat, and I want to go there, of course, um, rose in stages within a walled sacred precinct where a variety of structures served as the gods abode and residence um, of functional buildings. Okay, so now they had, this is Nanar and Sin. Sin, so, so Ishtar, I mean, so, okay, I'm going to try to go on my memory. So Inanna Ishtar, her name in, a, in Anunnaki language is Ab Sin, and it means that she came from Sin, and so Sin was actually her father. Now, it's interesting that we associate Sin with um, people who are sinners, but it's but the but um, Nanar um, but Sin was actually, according to the Sumerian tablets, he was the he was basically the first leader to be politically impartial, and he was more about peace and prosperity for the humans, whereas the in, um, the Enlilites and the um, Enki, uh, Enkiites were more about war for their faction of God, which those were the two brothers that came from um, Nibiru, some of the first settlers. So I believe they were Pleiadian. You know, I'm really confused about Pleiadian and the beer. I'm confused about all those things. So I'm just kind of bringing these to you. I don't have the full picture. And also, I feel like no matter what you read, you need to kind of just make a little mental three by five note on these things. And your heart will have to gel these later when you put these pieces together. But what I wanted to bring up to you was the twin situation here because these guys had twins. Now, I don't, I think these are guys are both fully Anunnaki. Um, however, I believe uh, that Sin was the, the first full god, the uh, first full god bloodline who was born on Earth. That's his distinction. And that defines his motivations. We can see them evolving, you know, from selfishness to maybe that sin was more about prosperity and peace. Now he and uh, Nanar over here, and okay, I don't want to go on in fact. We see the ring though, and I want to. I just want to point out to their he their head dresses, which show, in my opinion, show 
their not only their um, their hierarchy within the gods, but also are symbolic of their brain structure. Okay. Well, anyway, they had twins named Utu Shamash. Utu and Shamash are the same name for the boy twin, and um, Inanna Ishtar as the girl twin. So she was not twins with Osiris. Now, Osiris probably was a half brother, and I haven't found his. Unless he is Utu Shamash, I haven't found his um, Anunnaki name. So maybe somebody knows. I've read all these books, and you know the, what happens is when these books are so mind blowing, it's actually hard to hold these facts in your head. It's like since it goes, since it's such a mind blowing subject. But um, I just wanted to bring this up that Inanna Ishtar is a twin, and um, so since we found twins in her womb. I just think this is an important tidbit of information, and also I think it's important that she was born of the first ruler, Sin, who um, was the very first ruler to put peace and prosperity above warring. And her name was Absin. Um, one of her names was Absin, Ishtar Inanna. And I'm not saying that she's perfect or anything. I'm not deifying her at all. These guys were not gods. They were just long-lived, techno technologically advanced, and they were just pretending to be gods. You know, and they pretended to be gods even with their own children. Yogamesh grew up thinking that his ancestors were immortal, and then his mom, I can't remember her name, told him, no, they're just long-lived, they're not immortal, and you can, you know, go to the planet and you'll live a long time too. But you just don't live a long time on Earth. You, but I mean, they do live a long time on Earth. They just don't live a long time compared to what they're used to on Earth. So, also I wanted to say that Absin is the word for um, uh, the maiden or Virgo. Um, also, this date, um, 2160 BC, came up when it says here that Stonehenge on the Euphrates was built. And I would like to try to find that. Um, here's, uh, I think that's the regular Stonehenge. But anyway, Absin means um, Virgo, which actually means the maiden. So she actually has the Virgo named after her. Oh, here it is. I, I write in all my books because I keep them forever. Nana sends children Utu Shamash and Anana Ishtar, the feminine constellation of Virgo, the maiden, rather than the inaccurate virgin, like that of the planet Venus, was probably named at first in honor of Ninma, was renamed Absin. Um, now, Ninma, going on memory, I'm kind of nervous about going on memory because you guys will know that I have read so much, and my memory is actually, it's kind of like having a barge of concepts and you put new concepts on and then other ones seem to fall over the side. But I think that Ninma is the half-sister of Enki and Enlil and Enki wanted to marry her and Enlil ended up marrying her because he had rights. But she was their medical doctor of their away team. So she was like, in Star Trek, she was like um, Beverly Crusher, you know, beautiful and smart and she was the... Um, the away team medical officer, and uh, she was responsible for a lot of their science. Sorry about my fingers. I just came back from the lake, and I took the dogs, and okay. So, that is my video. Oh my gosh, are we already at 14? I wanted to stay at 5. All right, but anyway, this is Venus and about the twins, and I think we have some important clues here. Um, I did break down the word obscene in gematria. And it looks like 42. I have found that so far these ancient Anunnaki words, they must have predated the design of English. And that basically English was created to go with Pythagorean gematria. And they basically are just phonetically recreating these words. And they, I haven't found a lot of crazy codes in these ancient names. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna keep you know checking, but I think that. This language is so old, it goes, it wasn't constructed with the idea of matching the Pythagorean gematria. I think that came later. 
Okay, thank you for watching. Talk to you later.